In this example, we're told that we have a uh, viscous clutch comprised of two closely spaced parallel circular discs. So this um, disc on the left-hand side has a circular profile, same with on the right-hand side. And in between these discs is a viscous liquid with a viscosity mu. And what's happening is the left disc is rotating around at some rotational speed omega i, and through viscous stresses, it causes the right-hand disc to rotate at some uh, angular velocity omega o for uh, i for it coming in and o for going out. And the discs are spaced a distance a between them. And we're asked to find the torque transmitted between the disc pair. So let me just draw this uh, one of these discs just from uh, kind of looking end on. It's going to look like a circle with the radius capital R. And then going out to some arbitrary radius little r, let me draw a little circle here. Actually, I'm going to draw an annulus, so a little bit of area here. Uh, that annulus has a thickness dr. Over that little bit of area, the angular velocity or the, the velocity around in the kind of the theta direction or tangential direction will be a constant. So if this thing's rotating at angular speed omega, the velocity there will be omega r. And that's the same omega r all the way around the all the way around the annulus, because it's at the same radius. The area of that little annulus will be the circumference, 2 pi r, times its thickness, dr. So that's just the circumference going around the disk times its thickness, dr. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the shear stress acting on that little bit of area, and then find the, the shear force, so that'll be the shear stress times the area, and then do an R cross F calculation to get the little bit of torque caused by the shear stress on that surface. Right, so I'm going to do find the little bit of torque acting on that little area. That's going to be an R cross F, so that'll be R times, I'll call it DFS, S for shear, so a little bit of shear force. That shear force will be the shear stress acting on that little area times the the area itself. And that shear stress, just uh, so you're aware, it's going to be on, uh, well, let me put a coordinate system first. This will be the y direction. That's the r direction. And then going around uh, in the circumferential direction, we'll call it the theta direction. So that'll be shear stress on the y face acting in the theta direction that we care about. The uh, area we just said was 2 pi r dr. So we know that. So now what we have to do is find the shear stress, tau y theta. So that'll be the viscosity. We're going to assume that this is a Newtonian fluid. That'll be the viscosity times the change in the theta velocity divided by the change in y. Okay. And what we're going to assume is that the velocity profile between these two disks is a linear one. We're going to make it an assumption that this is a coet flow style velocity profile. If I zoom in on the fluid, so here's the disk on the left, here's the disk on the right. Um, since this one is rotating around, put a center line there, this one's rotating around at omega i, the velocity over here will be going around. I'm, I'm going to draw the velocity kind of at the, um, the very edge of the disk where it's, well, no, I'll do it at some arbitrary radius. The velocity there will be r omega i, and then the velocity on the output side will be r omega o. So the velocity profile will look linear between them, and then it'll remember that we have the no-slip boundary condition at the solid surfaces, so that's why we have an omega i on this side, because it's at some arbitrary radius r. The velocity there will be r omega i. Same sort of thing here. If you're at some arbitrary velo um, radius r, the velocity there will be r omega o, because of the no-slip boundary condition. So the change in the, the change in the tangential velocity will be just the difference between those two. So it'll be r omega o minus r omega i, for example. 
all over the distance as we go from here out to here, which that distance is a. So this is going to be mu times r omega o minus omega i all over a. Okay, so that's the shear stress. So we can go ahead and plug that in. So our little bit of torque will be r times mu r omega o minus omega i over a times the area 2 pi r dr. By the way, um, the, the angular velocities, you know, one of these is going to be larger than the other, and uh, we won't worry about the sign on that. We know that we're just asked to find the magnitude of the torque. So whatever the sign comes out to be, just take the absolute value of it, and that's the magnitude that we're interested in. Okay, so if we want the total torque, what we need to do is add up all the little bits of torque. So we're going to integrate as r goes from the center out to the very edge. And we're going to add up all these little bits of torque. You know, I'm just going to write this as delta omega. It's just easier to do it that way. OK. So just again, a reminder, this expression is the tau. This is our area. Both of those together are our shear force on that little area. And then what we have here is the r cross f kind of calculation to give me the torque. So we can pull out some constants here. We're going to have a 2 pi times mu times delta omega all over a. And then what's left in the integral will be an r cubed dr. So the torque in the end will be pi over 2 mu delta omega over a times r capital R to the fourth, if I've done everything correctly there. All right, so that's the torque that will be transmitted between the two rotating disks. So just to quickly recap the way we did this, we realized, first of all, the physics of the problem, which was uh, when this rotates through viscous stresses, it'll cause this disk to rotate. So we wanted to find the torque due to that. The torque will be an r cross f kind of calculation. And we recognize that the, the shear force, the f sub s here, will vary depending on the radius because the speed on the disk will vary depending on the radius. It'll be like omega times r. And that'll affect the shear stress. So the little bit of uh, shear, or, yeah, shear force will be r, I'm sorry, the little bit of shear force will be the shear stress times the area the area is 2 pi r dr. It's just the area of that little annulus. The shear stress is assuming a Newtonian fluid, mu times du dy. Chain, the change in the velocity is just r delta omega. Change in y is just a. That's just the separation distance. Plug that all back in and then integrate as we go from the center of the disk out to the edge. And that gives me the total torque, which is what we have right here. All right, we'll go ahead and end the example there.